Before this starts, I just want to give a warning, a spoiler warning. If you have not seen Spider-Man No Way Home yet, do not watch this video because this is a spoiler review of the film. Hello everyone, it's Brandon Prime and welcome to another video. And today I want to talk about No Way Home. I saw it on the first day it came out. And I have to say, if it's not the, it's not just a good Marvel film, it is the best Marvel film I have ever seen. And it's my most favourite Spider-Man movie I have ever watched. Because I have to say, I think it was about two hours long, I was in the cinema, and it was an early Christmas present for my brother, so thanks bro. We went to sit it. Uh, we went to see it on the morning it came out. We went to the very first sitting at eleven thirty a.m. and let me tell you, it was so worth it. Cause I tell you what, the theatre reaction to the film was just incredible, amazing. Everyone was screaming about everything that happened in the film. Like three Marvel Legends was it? Three Marvel Legends, four. The most? Yeah, I think it was four Marvel Legends that uh, were in the movie. And let me say, it was good to see them all from each universe. To be fair, I wish they had put Venom or like, a sixth villain in the film to make a multiversal Sinister Six, but oh well. Here's what it is. Now, I have to say that at the beginning of the film, it does seem a little bit rushed, but it is what it is because it's a multiversal film mainly but you know it's mainly centered around Peter Parker so which I'm happy about and that uh, Spider-Man Spider-Man himself not just one but three Spider-Men Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire when they appeared on the screen the whole theatre went crazy my heart was beating so fast of excitement because speculation Rumours and all we, is what we were all clinging on to and they were all true. Well, most of them were pretty true Spider-Man No Way Home is the greatest Marvel movie of all time In my opinion There will be a lot of people that probably don't agree But hey, it is what it is Spider-Man No Way Home is Great Especially with all three Spider-Man and, at the beginning, Matt Murdock's... Matt Murdock. Charlie Cox's Matt Murdock appears at the beginning of the film. Everyone was clapping and happy. Because I'll tell you what, Matt Murdock knocked it out of the park. Even if it was a small cameo, you know. He's Peter's lawyer. Makes sense, doesn't it? Ow. I am so, so happy I went to see this film before... Everyone else did, because obviously it would have been packed if not. Every seat would have been sold out and that. Even though we're in the middle of a pandemic, I know a pack. Loads of people would go see it, because after all the speculation and all three Spider-Man showing up, I ain't surprised. Spider-Man is turned out to be the greatest year present for me. Because this year has gone downhill for me fast after what happened with my epilepsy and all that. But... Besides that, you know, I've already talked about that in the past. This year is coming to a close very soon in the next couple of days. Or two weeks to be precise, I think. A week and a half? I don't know. All I know is that Spidey has wrapped up his No Way Home trilogy. At least I think so. And let me say... That Spider-Man, Tom Holland's Spider-Man has been renewed for more films, I think. I think it's been confirmed. Sony, have, Sony and Marvel have confirmed it. Now, the thing that was disappointing to me was the Marvel and Sony deal with, like, Venom. Like, Venom in the post credit scene. Like, you know, he went back to his own universe. Yeah, cool that, you know, his part of the symbiote was back, but I really wanted to see Tom Hardy's Venom. Like, Tom Hardy and his Venom go versus Tom Holland's Spider-Man. It made sense. It literally made sense if they would have done that since he was taken into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. 
Seriously. Now, it's disappointing, but at the same time, I'm glad a piece of the symbiote still remained. I did have this idea of maybe Spider-Man... Tom Holland Spider-Man, since obviously, you know, everyone's forgotten about him. That he got... That maybe he could appear in the animated series across the Spider-Verse, either part one or part two. And then may, and maybe step through the wrong portal and maybe end up in the Venomverse. And that's how they fight. All that. Because maybe it might be a good idea because that's all I'm thinking. Tom Holland's trilogy, enter the Spider-Verse, across the Spider-Verse I meant. And then go to the Venomverse and then, I don't know, after go back to his own universe, the MCU. All I know is that Spider-Man will return. Tom Holland has a brand new suit. It was very hard to see it though. I, I have to admit, I really can't wait for like the, like the concept arts and everything to come out about it. This is just blimmin' exciting. Very exciting. And that is basically the review. That's all I wanted to say because, ugh, okay, maybe not. Maybe I want to just talk about quickly about how all three Spider-Man were having good old chemistry. It was good to see Andrew Garfield dive down and catch MJ. And redemption for him missing, failing to save Gwen. Obviously, you know, he tried his best, but he couldn't. And then Toby Maguire shows up with his organic weapon and all that. And wow, the theatre reaction. Like I said, the theatre reaction was br brilliant. It was fantastic. Like, you don't expect that from a Spider-Man. Well, I guess you do, since it's, I think it's like surpassed the... The uh, Avengers Endgame goal. I know the trailer did. Incredible. Utterly incredible. I'm so happy. I'm just so happy it happened. All the fans are getting fan service. And the thing is, they've crammed a lot of Venom villains in. But at the same time, it works. It's a multiversal movie. Like, they managed to just put each villain's backstory a little bit into it. And that's enough. That's literally enough to... Well, it's literally enough to get everyone cheering because it made sense. The story made sense. Everything made sense. Tom Holland's Spider-Man was brilliant. Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, even I think Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, his performance was phenomenal, even better than before because he was stepping into the role again and he, I think he took it over the top but in a good way. Incredible. Now, I think that'll be it for the review. I just wanted to put my opinions, and obviously it's a spoiler review, so if you didn't click away, that's your fault, not mine. I will obviously put the spoiler warning at the beginning of the video, so you can, yeah. Okay. Stay primed.